I'm so grateful for what my doctors and therapists at Menninger did for me that if I could do the same for someone else, my life would be complete. OCD is a neurobiological disorder that's characterized by irrational thoughts and followed by repetitive behaviors. When I went to Menninger, my OCD kind of controlled my life, and when I left, I was Liz who just had OCD, but I learned how to manage it. I think having OCD has kind of shaped my entire career path and really my life's passion and kind of my whole family's mission now. I got my master's in social work, I'm a licensed therapist here in Houston, and I'm finishing my PhD now at U of H. As a therapist, the impact I want to give to my patients is the same impact Menninger gave to me. I want to be able to give them hope that they can fight this illness, give them the tools to be able to do so, and the resources to be able to continue to live their life. The OCD Challenge is an online interactive website for those living with OCD, and it's something that can be a really great tool to help people who are in clinics like Menninger or other places that when they leave, they can use this free tool to stay accountable and continue to manage this illness. I think it's really important to let people know that they're not alone. That's something that Menninger gave me. They saved my life, and um, I'll forever be grateful to the clinic for that. My passion is to try to find ways to improve our mental health care system and to get the care to the patients who need it. Within the VA, for instance, there is the Primary Care Mental Health Integration Program, embedding mental health providers into primary care settings. What we've been developing is the interventions that work in those care settings. Veterans are particularly sensitive to mental health stigma, largely because of their military culture and their background. So what we try to do is use the language more specific to the symptoms or the functional impairments that they're having. Instead Instead of coming towards that patient and saying, we have a depression intervention for you, we move towards that patient to say, we're here to help you improve your quality of life. In turn, what happens is the patient is more likely to engage in the treatment, and they also may impact not only depression, they may impact that individual's physical health as well. The identification of mental health in these settings has improved dramatically, and so if we're thoughtful and strategic, I think we can do a really nice job of improving the care of our country. I have taken it upon myself to make sure the pain and suffering of a family that deals with alcoholism and depression and suicide stops with me. I am co-chair with Molly LaFosse of Menninger Clinic's Young Leaders in Mental Health. What Molly and I hope to accomplish is to erase the stigma and empower those with mental illness to ask for help. It has a lot to do with making the world a better place for my kids and my grandkids, but it is important to be part of something that could be the greatest medical discoveries of the next 50 years to help make a change and to help make a difference. We kept coming back to education. If you can provide those educational experiences and the resource for knowledge, you can really help shift the focus the Menninger Clinic has done a great job training young doctors, and they've also provided life-saving services to young people as patients. With this Young Leaders and Mental Health effort, we are specifically focused on helping the next generation understand the importance of mental health to the success of our lives. There are patients of all strata that need psychiatric care. I picked the county, and I'm very proud of the work that we do and the patients that we see. Nobody was five or 10 and said, I want to grow up and have schizophrenia. They may not have had access for many different reasons throughout their life to the kind of mental health care that they needed. And so when they show up here, things are bad, things are acute. Um, either from a medical perspective or from a psychiatric one. My particular interest is actually in trauma psychiatry, post-traumatic stress disorder. As you explain to someone that what they have is an issue that has treatment and you're gonna help them get better, the sense of relief is tremendous. We have a super strong psychiatry service. We can treat you at any level that you need to be treated. And I'm very proud of that. The people that actually come here leave better and they can stay better. Um, you know, the longer they stay connected to us. We have an intensive outpatient program within our facility, and then we have the outpatient clinics in the community. We try to be everywhere that our patients are, that our community is. I think our patients need a lot of care uh, and that they maybe n have not had before. And those are the kind of people that I want to serve. What drives me is trying to identify new ways of helping patients who suffer from the most serious mood disorders. The patients that we're focused on are usually those who've had at least three or four trials of antidepressants. And they're desperate to try something new because what's, what they have been trying hasn't worked. One of the studies we're doing right now is to look at a IV infusion 
of a old drug that's been used for many years as a agent for general anesthesia. We're using it in very low doses as a way to rapidly improve symptoms of depression. We've seen some very robust and prolonged responses with just a single 40-minute infusion. The idea that one size fits all really doesn't work in psychiatry. So what we're trying to find is essentially the equivalent of glucose for a diabetic. Is there a blood test that can be used to track severity in the course of illness and how the drug is working? The Menninger Department is just a wonderful place to be a psychiatrist and a teacher and a faculty member. It's really at the forefront in a number of areas and we're lucky to have this department in Houston.